Hi there, my dear students. Welcome to the Contemporary World course. I am Teacher Heidi, and I'll be staying with you throughout the semester. And in this course, we will be learning about the different issues that concern people around the world. So these issues include global demography, migration, um, sustainable development, climate change, economic globalization, and a lot, lot more. In this week's lesson, we will be learning about what is globalization. So perhaps you have heard of the word before, but what exactly is globalization? We experience globalization knowingly and unknowingly every day of our lives. So this is the movement of people, of, of ideas, of money, and of culture globally. This is not a new phenomenon. The Silk Road, which is an old trade route between China and the Mediterranean area, allowed for the exchange of not only goods but also of, of ideas and of culture. So what is new, however, is the range, the, the scale and the speed at which this movement is happening. Think of your smartphones and the global coordination it took from assembling the parts of that smartphone to the marketing until to the point where that smartphone gets into your own hands. Or think of this COVID-19 pandemic and how it has reached people around the world in a faster than lightning speed. So it was something that was just concentrated in Wuhan, China, and now it's everywhere and has made changes, unprecedented changes all over the world. So of course, many have attempted to define what is globalization. So globalization is a term that came into popular usage in 1980s to describe the increased movement of people, of knowledge, of ideas and goods and money across national borders that has led to the increased in interconnectedness among the world's population economically, politically, socially, and culturally. And although, although it is often thought of as economic, in economic terms, this process has also many social, um, political implications as well. So we will look into the different or a few definitions of globalization. So first, Goldstein in 2009 said that globalization encompasses many trends including expanded international trade, monetary coordination, multinational corporations, telecommunications, technical and specific cooperation, cultural exchanges of new types and scale, migration and refugee flows, and relations between the world's rich and poor countries, and between human beings and the natural environment. Friedman in, two, in 1999 says globalization refers to the inexorable integration of markets, nation states, and technologies to a degree never witnessed before in a way that is enabling individuals corporations and nation states to reach around the world farther, faster, deeper, and cheaper than ever before. Another definition, that of Kiss Andre in 2013 said, globalization is defined as the unprecedented new world state, a special phase of the world history that is already perceptible but that started ultimately in its mature form in 1989 with a retreat of communism. Haywood in 2014 said globalization is the emergence of a complex web of interconnectedness that means that our lives are increasingly shaped by events that occur and decisions that are made at a great distance from us. Distinctions are commonly drawn between economic globalization, cultural globalization, and political globalization. Ritzer and Dean in 2015 said globalization is a transplanetary process, set of processes, 
involving increasing liquidity and growing multi-directional flows of people, objects, places, and information as well as the structures they encounter and create that are barriers to or expedite those flows. So, Manfred Steger, who was born in 1961 and who is a professor um, of global professor at the University of Hawaii and is also a professor of global studies and director of the Globalism Research Center at the RMIT University in Australia until 2013. Steger's research and teaching spans globalization, ideology, and nonviolence. So Manfred Steger found common themes among the many definitions of globalization. Theme one, according to Manfred Steger, is that globalization involves the creation and of new and the multiplication of existing social networks and activities that increasingly overcome traditional, political, economic, cultural, and geographical boundaries. Another theme that he found from those definition says globalization is reflected in the expansion and stretching of social relations activities and interdependence third globalization involves the intensification and acceleration of social exchanges and activities and another one globalization process also involves the subjective plane of human consciousness since the creation, expansion, and intensification of social interconnectedness and interdependence did not occur merely on an objective and material level. So what is globalization according to Manfred Steger? So according to him, globalization is the expansion and intensification of social relations and consciousness across world time and across world space by expansion he means or that refers to both the creation of new social networks and the multiplication of existing interconnect connections that cut across traditional political economic cultural and geographical boundaries and by intensification he means that it refers to the expansion, stretching, and acceleration of those networks. So basically, class, if we talk of globalization, think of the interconnectedness, of the interdependence, of integration of economic, social, cultural, and political aspects of our lives. It is a global movement of people that is multi-directional so that movement can be to the north to the south to the east to the west and so on in a way that is making our roads our seas our airspace as international highways and because of globalization the world is becoming a global village so there you go of course, there are manifestations of globalization in terms of economics. We will um, realize that there is indeed globalization. So, for example, multinational corporations operate on a global scale with satellite offices and branches in numerous locations. So think of Jollibee, which is proudly Pinoy, but now you can find Jollibee anywhere in the world they have stores in the uk in the middle east in the us in china and in a lot more countries outsourcing can add to the economic development of a struggling country bringing much needed jobs um, some automobiles use parts from other countries like in a car being assembled in the united states with parts coming from Korea or Germany or Japan one shirt that is sold in the States could have been made from Chinese cotton by workers in Thailand which could have been shipped on a French ship 
that had Spanish crew or Filipino crew since we have a lot of seafarers working in different ships, cargo ships or tanker ships. In the blending of culture, globalization is evident, of course. So I mentioned of the Silk Road, which is an old route between China and the Mediterranean area. So they traded um, silk and other products and along with that, some ideas and culture as well. Christian missionaries from Europe added to the globalization of Christianity. So this is how we became Christians in the first place. Food is also one factor of globalization. So we get to experience Eastern or Western cuisine um, right here in our province. So we get to have a taste of Korean food, of Japanese or Chinese food, along with Italian food, for example. Satellite television allows for one country for one country's TV shows to be broadcasted in many other countries. So who is fond of K-drama or a lot of TV series or other foreign TV series? In globalization, in technology, of course, the internet is a major driver of globalization. Global news networks like CNN contribute to the spread of knowledge in a way that um, is made faster so before we get to search for these information in books now we can get these information with just a, a few taps in our smartphones or a few clicks in um, our laptops using the internet of course so of course if there are a lot of people who are in favor of globalization. There are also a lot of skeptics, actually. We call them anti-globalization. So many anti-globalism activities see globalization as the promotion of a corporatist agenda, which is intent on constricting the freedoms of individuals in the name of profit. And they also claim that increasing autonomy and strength of corporate entities increasingly shape the political policy of nation states. And of course, if there are against um, globalization, there are also pro-globalization. So supporters of free trade, for example, point out that economic theories such as comparative advantage suggests that free trade leads to a more efficient allocation of resources with all those involved in the trade benefiting. In general, they claim that this leads to lower prices, more employment, and better allocation of resources, of course. So the term globalism means it is a widespread belief among powerful people that global integration of economic markets is beneficial to everyone since it sp spreads freedom and democracy across across the world so of course there are so many heated debates about globaliza globalization and the positive and negative effects so while globalization is thought of as the key by many as having the potential to make societies richer through trade and to bring knowledge and information to people around the world, there are also many others who perceive globalization as contributing to the exploitation of the poor by the rich as a threat to traditional cultures as the process of modernization changes society. So here, let's look into the different advantages and disadvantages of globalization. So first and foremost, there's peaceful relations. So most of the countries have resorted to trade relations with each other in order to boost their economy, leaving behind any bitter past experiences, if any. And of course, another advantage is that of employment, considered as one of the most crucial advantages, globalization has led to the generation of numerous employment opportunities, 
companies are moving towards the developing countries to acquire labor force. You know, of course, that a lot of Filipinos are working as um, OFWs or overseas Filipino workers, and they are everywhere. They're in the Middle East, they are in the, la the land down under in Australia, or in Canada, or in the US and in Europe. They're just everywhere. Another advantage of globalization is that of education. With numerous educational institutions around the world, one can move out from the home country for better opportunities elsewhere. Do you know that you can get scholarships and be an exchange student and gain your diploma in another country? Not right now, of course, with this pandemic ongoing, but um, there are various scholarships that allows one to earn his or her education um, in any country, in um, Western countries. So another advantage of um, globalization is that of product quality. So the product quality has been enhanced so as to retain customers today the customers are may compromise with the price range but not with the quality of the products so companies strive to make products that are of good quality in order to retain their consumer base another advantage of globalization is on cheaper prices of the products that we use and consume so globaliz globalization has brought in fierce competition in the market that allowed companies to lower down their the prices of their products to make it more affordable to their consumers so communications as well the circulation of new of information is no longer a tedious task and can happen in seconds in real time so the internet has significantly affected the global economy, thereby providing direct access to information and um, products. Another advantage is that of transportation. So today with various modes of transportation available, one can conveniently deliver the products to a customer located at any part of the world. So various airlines make it possible to be in one country in one continent in the morning and be in another continent in the afternoon or just a few hours and be back to your home at in the same day but of course during the lockdown aircrafts were grounded and travel travel were more restricted so as we slowly ease into the new normal so hopefully things will get back and now airlines are resuming slowly resuming flights to destinations that are um, granted permits or um, possible destinations another advantage of globalization is on gdp increase so the gross domestic product which is commonly known as gdp is the money value of the final goods and services produced within the domestic country or territory of the country during the accounting year free trade that's another advantage of globalization this is a policy in which a country does not levy taxes or on the import or export of goods or services from other countries so there are countries which have resolved to free trade in specific regions this allow consumers to buy goods and services comparatively at a lower cost of course so that's another advantage of globalization on travel and tourism tourism of course is one of the top industries um, around the world and a lot of Filipinos are employed in various areas of the tourism industry sadly though this is one of the most affected industries during the pandemic during the lockdowns um, but then again hopefully 
um, we are slowly easing into the new normal and hopefully um, travel to different tourist destinations will um, slowly resume. Another advantage of globalization uh, is on external borrowing. With the help of globalization, there is opportunity for corporate national and sub-national borrowers to have better access to external finance with facilities such as external commercial borrowing and syndicated loans so if there are advantages to globalization of course there are also disadvantages to globalization so can you think of any disadvantages to globalization First and foremost, of course, there is the health issue. So globalization has given rise to more health risks and presents new threats and challenges for epidemics. So the dawn of HIV AIDS having its origin in the wilderness of Africa, the virus has spread like wildfire throughout the globe in no time. So the same thing with the COVID-19 pandemic for from something that is just concentrated in in a small place in Wuhan China now it's everywhere because of faster means of communication of faster means of travel the covid-19 has also spread throughout the world in no time at all and of course affecting everybody economically um yeah people losing jobs and industries coming to a standstill because of this pandemic so this is one of the many disadvantages of globalization second is on the loss of culture so with a large number of people moving into and out of a country people may the culture takes a back seat and people may adapt the culture of the resident country and they tend to follow the foreign culture more and forgetting their own roots then this can give rise to cultural conflicts another one is on an even wealth distribution it is said that the rich are getting richer while the poor are getting poorer so in the real sense globalization has not really reduced poverty Another disadvantage of globalization, of course, is on the environmental degradation. This is, of course, a global issue that we should all be concerned about. We have all experienced natural disasters and climate change because of man's neglect on our natural environment and for the sake, all for the sake of economic progress. So we must all adapt the concept of um, sustainable development that will be one of our lessons here in the contemporary world course another disadvantage is on the disparity so through globalization though globalization has opened new avenues like wider markets and employment there still exists a disparity in the development of economies so um, structural unemployment owes to the disparity created so some countries gain advantage or considerable advantage like China of course while there are also countries who are suffering more than they are benefiting from globalization so this is true to some sub-saharan um, countries another disadvantage is on Conflicts, so it has given rise to terrorism and other forms of violence. So such acts not only cause loss of human life, but also huge economic losses. We will know later on in our lesson on global cities how terrorism or how global cities have always been a target for um, terrorists. And another disadvantage to globalization is on cutthroat competition. So opening the doors of international trade has given birth to intense competition. So this has affected the local markets dramatically. The local players, they're 
thereby suffer huge losses as they lack the potential to advertise or export their products on a large scale therefore the domestic market shrink so those are among the disadvantages of globalization so we have here Arjun Apadurai who is a cultural theorist and anthropologist so he is the person who came up with escapes theory he was born in India in 1949 and he is professor at the University of Chicago and his publications include modernity at large cultural dimensions of globalization and this juncture and difference in the global cultural economy so according to Arjun Apadurai the anthropologist so there are different kinds of globalization occur on multiple and intersecting dimensions of integration that he calls scapes so there is ethnoscape which refers to the move global movement of people there is mediascape which is all about the flow of culture a technoscape which refers to the circulation of mechanical goods and software while financecape denotes the global circulation of money and idioscape is the realm where political ideas move around so for example um, in ethnoscape according to apadurai tourists immigrants refugees exiles guest workers and other moving groups and persons appear to affect the, pol the politics of and between nations to a hitherto unprecedented degree in technoscape technologies themselves are drivers of globalization so technologies like the internet are helping facilitate the rapid movement of people and goods across borders at faster and faster rates financecape Visa and MasterCard are almost everywhere these days, enabling us to use our money globally. So most credit cards will work in most countries around the world, making it easier to spend globally. In Mediascape, Apadura wrote of the power of international media to send news information across the globe at a rapid rate. So blogging and vlogging, for example, allows for sharing of information in a way that used to be just found in books before. People consume media instantaneously using Twitter and other social media platforms. Egoscape, on the other hand, refers to the ideas, symbols, and narratives that have spread around the globe. So those are the five scapes according to Arjun Apadurai. So again, he is a theorist and anthropologist. So those are his five scapes of globalization. So my dear students, globalization is a reality and there is no stopping it. It has been here for a long while and we should expect it to continue in the future. My question is, are you ready? Are you ready for a highly globalized world? Are you ready to be a global citizen of the world? Do you speak the global language? Do you have the skills that will make yourself economically marketable to, co to companies? My advice, be ready or be left behind. So that's our first lesson on the Contemporary World series. So for more lecture videos, please do subscribe to this channel.